So that's not really useful right now. So let's do something a little bit more useful. Let's do set security flow trace options. What do we have here? We had packet filter. PF1 is what I, what I called it. Let's do source prefix. And let's do that. Let's match everything. And let's commit that. So we're going to look for anybody on this network that is trying to get to port 80. So as we can see here, that's now committed. So if we do show log security trace, now we're getting some actual data here. And this will allow us to actually see the packets as they go through the logic of the actual SRX device and you can see you know if it was NATed, where it looked that up, where it got it, that information, how it was NATed, which process IDs that it used to do it, uh, did it go through a firewall filter, if so which filter did it match, how did it match that filter, if it went through a VPN the same thing and then you can find logic errors in your config or you can find a bug or something if it's not processing a packet the same way, here you see some traffic going to different IPs here uh, you can see that uh, where you know find flow it's going to match a flow in the table for you know to do its uh, logic so I mean you can really follow if you wanted something very specific you could flow through the actual device and see how this does its thing um, interestingly enough um, I was having an issue where when I turned on the UTM antivirus filtering on port 80, some web pages would hang. And by doing a trace on this and seeing it being redirected to the internal UTM filter, I got the idea based on the error that was being displayed that I might have to lower my MSS field or maximum segment size in my TCP packets. I lowered it down off of 1500 a little bit, and sure enough, uh, that fixed the. Uh, issue with that. So this is a really cool useful thing. Now <clears throat> something I want to say about flow options there are a couple different areas that you can have trace flow options so let's edit this. Let's do edit security flow. This is one section uh, and there's my TCP MSS adjustment I told you I made earlier. So this is one section. Now the cool thing about trace options is that if I were to have this be very generic, okay? Like match all internal uh, sources and match all destination ports. I could have this be very generic. Now it's only going to keep one mega, the previous one megabyte, and it's only going to keep two files. So I could have this constantly rolling over, and I would have an easy way to troubleshoot any flow in my network. So you could have trace options running all the time, and they they run very very well. Now depending on the SRX device that you're running trace options on it can either be done at a very low level in an ASIC or it can be done in the system and it may have varying uh, performance impacts but this is a very low level box and you will see that it has not 89 percent of my CPU is idle it has not impacted me at all and And this version of the device, my pick is a software pick. It's not a physical chip, um, but you can see that it is. I'm running good. So, I would highly recommend that you leave trace flow options running. Um, another thing you can do as well is you can leave it deactivated. So I can do deactivate security flow trace options, and I can do show security flow trace options, and you'll see that it's deactivated. So if I apply that. I can really quickly activate it, commit the changes. Now, th this really depends on your organization. My organization is extremely strict, and they almost want to change control form just to log into a box. So, uh, I would probably just choose to keep these running all the time if it were my organization. But if it was a more reasonable organization, you might want to uh, have it disabled and then activate it. But there's almost no overhead. There's a couple other areas I want to show you. 
I don't have VPNs on this box because it's in the lab, but if I did have VPNs, you could do set security Ike trace options for Ike part of your site to site VPNs and IPSEC trace options if you want to trace you know trace just the phase two. Um, there's also trace options in other parts of the box. So there's you know even certain processes like set secure set system services DHCP trace options if you want to figure out what's going on with DHCP. This was useful. I had a situation on the network where only the Mac computers, the Apple Macintosh computers would get IP addresses and uh, Windows systems were not getting them and it turned out that the actual DHCP service on the SRX was not running it had crashed or something, this was on older code that I had and um, the service was not running and the Macs were basically caching their old information even when you rebooted them apparently the Mac computers actually cached their IP information so if they didn't get a response they just used what they had and it was through this trace options that I figured that out so there's a lot of cool uses for trace options and um, I'm going to commit this because I'm not going to leave those running in the lab we don't really have a lot of traffic in here except what I'm generating on this 10 network to show you um, so I'm just going to commit that and re-deactivate uh, the trace options anyways that is uh, basic troubleshooting uh, I will include a link at the uh, at the end of this video there is a website you can go to that has all the uh, regex expressions for the matching section of the monitor traffic and um, and that should get you started the other thing that I wanted to let you know was that uh, on this particular device which is the XRX210 monitor traffic command only shows you the traffic coming into an interface not the egress so if I wanted to monitor traffic destined to this device from the outside for instance monitor traffic interface FE and I don't see anything because I don't have any inbound traffic now if I left this on long enough I might have inbound traffic um, to this interface and this is inbound traffic that does not match a rule see here's some inbound traffic coming to my outside interface so you might see some stuff these are my ARP um, entries for my static NAT that is coming out of here so that might be useful to you uh, to remember that you always want to do the traffic monitor on the interface your traffic is is coming from not your des not your destination interface so Hope you have fun. Until next time, thanks for watching.